Hello! Today I'm going to be looking at this random box of watercolour paints. These are actually Roman Schmall Aquarius Polish Extra Fine Watercolours and this is a five colour set for ECWS Symposium Hapsalu 2019 in Estonia and I looked up what ECWS means. It is European Confederation of Watercolour Societies. So there we go. I happened to find this on Jackson's Art when I was purchasing some other Roman Schmall paints. I of course forgot to bring those out with me so I'm just going to look at this set today. I am really curious just to see what the colours are like so I shall peel off the plastic and we'll get into it. So I'm guessing this set might have been a promotion by Roman Schmoll for this particular watercolour exhibition and symposium. Not entirely sure. This happened in 2019 before the world fell to pieces. <laughs> and I was just having a little bit of a read about it. Apparently it cost 100 euro to have a piece of artwork hanging in this exhibition per entry. That's crazy. But I just thought that was interesting. And also just a quick apologies for my bad lighting and also maybe dodgy audio quality. That's because I'm still out at my father's, caring for him while he recovers from a broken hip and hip surgery. He is getting better every day. He's improved a lot. And thank you all so very much for your well wishes. He really appreciates it. So I'm doing my best to take out the echo which I'm getting in this room. And so I've been doing that in post-production. I hope it sounds okay. Apologies if it isn't. There is just nothing I can do about that. All right, enough jabbering from me. Let's get into this. So it's basically just in a little cardboard box and they're all wrapped individually. They look like chocolates. So the colours that we have in here are supposedly Lemon Yellow, Azo Red, French Ultramarine, Aquarius Green and Hematite Violet Shade. I'm not too sure about this one. This does not look like a red to me. It doesn't look anything like that. I think my next task will be to swatch these out to see what they actually look like on paper because sometimes when they're dry it's really hard to tell what they're going to look like. I have my Etcher sketchbook with 100% cotton watercolour paper and I think I'll make a little swatch thing over here and then do a painting over here. I might even mix the colours together because I'm really curious to see what colours we can get. As you can tell it is a very limited palette with only five colours. So firstly I'll do a swatch of the colours just to see how they perform on the paper and oh I got a bit of blue on my brush there. Let me just make sure that's rinsed out. I like to add some water on here first to see how well the paints will spread and how well they re-wet in water. This one looks like it's going to stay fairly still on the paper. It depends on the binder that's used and also the type of pigment. Here we go, so I'll just quickly swatch these out. Apologies that it's reflecting off the light. We'll see the colour better once it is dry. so pretty. Let me lift them up so we can see them better. Look at the granulation in that French ultramarine and the hematite. Those two in particular are very granulating although it seems like there's a little bit in the Aquarius green and I would say that's from the ultramarine in that. I'm so happy that Azo Red is a nice red colour and not the orangey colour it looked like when it was dry. 
and that lemon yellow is really bright. So down here I have made up a little chart so that I can mix all of the colours with each other. I'm going to do this off camera. It's going to take time to let them dry because I'll have to do the alternating squares and all of that. I think I'll do that in front of the TV because it's very wet and cold today and I'm getting a bit cold in this room so I'll go out where it's warm and do that. I will show you this once everything is painted out and fully dried. Here we go. It's the first time I've ever made one of these and it turned out really well. I'm quite pleased with this. So this is essentially the range of colours that you get if you mix all colours with each other. So I went along with all five colours this way, all five colours this way, and then combined the two to make all of the different combinations. And on this side I've done a really light wash. This is the darker more mass tone of the colors. So I tried to mix them as equally as possible. It's not super easy because some colors tend to be a uh, heavier tinting strength than others. For example, the lemon yellow is not quite as strong as say the hematite violet, but I think I did pretty well. And I think the colors are really pretty. It's quite a warm palette as you can see here because the Azo Red and the French Ultramarine are both very warm and these two are quite warm as well. The Lemon Yellow is on the cooler side and it's a really bright colour by comparison to everything else but I think the granulation in them is really pretty. I like the mix of the Azo Red and the Lemon Yellow together to make that nice flame orange. The French Ultra and Lemon Yellow actually make a decent green and it's a bit brighter than the Aquarius Green. Um, what else have we got that's interesting? Oh yes, I really like the Azo Red and the French Ultramarine mixed together. That kind of actually splits out and you can see how dense that Ultramarine is and how granulating it is. It's very pretty purple. This is quite pretty too, the Aquarius Green and the French Ultramarine. That makes quite a deep aquamarine colour, but yeah, it's really pretty. It's almost indigo. And this Hematite Violet's interesting as well, so I really like the colours and now I'm going to have to think of something to paint with them. I took art inspiration from the small town of Clunes where I'm staying at the moment, population roughly 1900. It's also one of the filming locations for the very first Mad Max movie, but man it's been cold out here. We had some really frosty mornings, I mean it was bitter. Even the bird bath had frozen over, oh boy, it was so cold. But cold or not, I still go out for my daily walks because I need to get the fresh air and I usually go around the back of the town which has this creek and you could see how barren a lot of the trees are. The neighbourhood sheep which do tend to bleat in the evenings and in the mornings, it's like an alarm clock. And then this is around the back. And that hill is a big mullock heap from where they used to mine gold here. This is the first place in Victoria where gold was ever found. So it's got that historical old timiness to it. And gold is still found around the area. I sadly have not yet managed to find any. But then we have this little creek walk which I like to do pretty much every day. It's nice just walking through here. It's a pleasant path, although when it rains some of the areas get quite boggy. But on this day it was lovely and sunny. So I stayed outside for quite a long time, absorbing as much vitamin D as possible, especially in these winter days. Then they built this bridge over the creek, which leads to one of the roads behind the town and also to the caravan park. So I didn't walk over there, I followed the trail that's on the left hand side. And here I am back on that trail. They've planted some new trees but you can see all of the other ones have lost their leaves and it's got kind of a Sleepy Hollow-esque vibe around it, especially this part. It's sort of creepy but I do quite like walking through here anyway and this is the part that gets really boggy when it rains. So it's not a long walk but it's one I do a couple of times a day usually just to keep my health and fitness up because otherwise I'm stuck inside all day and it just drives me a little bit loopy. Then the trail comes back out onto one of the main roads and back over the bridge to the little town which you can see up there. So it's a pleasant walk and really pretty just over this bridge looking down on the creek. So I took inspiration from this photo that I took and this is what I'm going to paint today, or at least try to. I started out with a quick sketch just to get the general lines in and where the creek placement is. I also drew in a few of the tree trunks just to have an idea of where those are. 
It's not exactly precise, I just took a general guess as to where things were placed and then I'm painting water over the whole background and adding on some French ultramarine for the sky and then lifting out some clouds with a tissue. So I don't usually use ultramarine in the sky unless it's the only blue I have, which is the case in this instance. And then I added in a little bit of that hematite in the water and also on some of the background for the shadow areas. Then I mixed up a lighter green with the yellow and blue I think and also some oranges. I just went in to get some of the colours of the grass and general placement of the light and dark areas. That mop brush I'm using at the moment holds so much water but you can see the huge drying shift that this paper causes and it is the paper not the paint because it's done this with all kinds of watercolours. It's not such a big deal but it just means you have to go over everything a few times, usually at least two sometimes three layers to get that really vibrant level of colour. And then I'm working back on the shadows and the light areas. It turned into a bit of a mess to be quite honest and in hindsight I really wish I bought some gouache with me because you'll see later when I start to paint in the trees I just cannot get any of the highlights on the trees that I would have liked so they do look a bit messy but otherwise I don't mind how this painting came out but there was a point at it where I was just thinking oh my lord why did I have to choose this really detailed picture because trees are just my nemesis when it comes to artworks I find them really hard to draw and paint especially to get them to look realistic so I was adding in all of the twigs which is a little more challenging at the moment because none of them have foliage and I don't know it just wasn't the greatest thing in the world but I did my best I kind of followed the picture to some extent but most of it I just ended up making up as I usually do because I was far too impatient to paint in all of the branches of the trees and it was really complicated especially on the left hand side of the picture there was just so much detail so it's just the impression of trees rather than actual realistic ones but I decided once everything had dried that I was going to go over everything with a black pen and turn it into a line and wash but in this case it's a wash and line <laughs> so I think the pen really helped just to add in more of a sketchy detail to it and I felt a lot happier with the picture after I'd done this I also used white pen to go over the tree trunks and add in that highlight which I would have preferred to do with gouache because then I could have gone off-white but such is life, sometimes we have to make do. The paints themselves I really like. They're nice earthy colours and you can see they're really good for landscapes. I would always like to have a brighter blue for skies, but the French Ultramarine was okay. The only thing with it is it's very granulating, so you just kind of have to live with a granulating sky. Not the end of the world, it's quite nice when it's watercolour. But you can see the white did help to lift it a bit. I probably could have gone over the foreground with another layer of paint just to brighten it up, but in the end I decided enough was enough. <laughs> I think I'm calling it quits on this one. Let me peel it and we'll see what I have here. There we go. It's not too bad, I guess. Not the greatest thing in the world that I've painted, but it turned out okay, I think, with the pen on top. It's given it a bit of life. Not quite what I was going for. Oh well, never mind. Sometimes that happens. Well, I think that's all I've got in me today, and I really like the paints. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. The granulation on them is stunning, and that hematite violet is a very useful colour. I like the different colour combinations that I was able to make. It's still quite a muted palette, but at least you get some brightness with that lemon yellow. And the Azo Red is also quite a vibrant colour. <laughs> yeah, my painting didn't work out quite as I would have liked. That happens. But I am sure I will think of something else to paint with these over time. And I will be getting back home eventually to look at the other Roman Schmall paints that I picked up. And then we can see all of the colours that I have together. So that's a video down the line. And be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just a little one because I was really curious to see what these paints are like. And I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Have a fantastic day out there and I'll swatch you later. Bye!